Welcome to another episode of The U. My name's Robert Whitaker. Today, I'm going to show you what Python variables are. Now, if you've been holding off and intimidated to get into programming, it's now time to take the red pill. So follow me, and I'm going to show you exactly what you need to get started. First up are variables. So I'm going to show you what variables are in three simple steps. Step number one, we're going to create a variable and assign it to a value. Step number two, we'll then print out the value of the variable. Step number three, we'll then look at how variables are used in real world network automation scripts. So first, what is a variable? So in Python scripts, a variable is a name that we give to values. To later access that value, you can specify the variable's name. Okay, so let's go to step number one. We're gonna create our variable. So first, let's create a new Python script. So we're gonna go to the CLI, and I'm gonna use the code greeting py command to open up and create a new script called greeting py. Okay, so now I'm inside of the script. We're gonna create a variable. Now remember, a variable is a name that we give to values. So I'm gonna create a variable name of greeting, and to assign the variable name to a value, I use the equal sign. And then I put in a value of hello world. Now, one important thing to understand is this variable name of greeting and its value of hello world will be stored in memory when we run our script. And that takes us to step number two. We're gonna print out the value of the variable by referencing the variable's name. So let's go back to our script. We're gonna go to line three of the script. Now I'm gonna use something called the print function. Now, if you don't know what print functions are, that's completely okay. But think of a print function as like a tool that comes with Python that essentially allows you to print things out. So next, inside the print functions parentheses, I'm gonna specify exactly what I wanna print out. So I'm gonna specify the name of the variable I wanna print out, which is the greeting variable. I then save the script. Okay, so we have our greeting py script, it's been created. We're now gonna go to the CLI so we can run our script. So I'm gonna run the Python command and specify the name of our script, which is greeting py. Now I'm gonna hit enter here to run my script, but I want your prediction. When I hit enter, what output do you think we might see when our script runs? So I'm gonna hit enter and the script simply prints out, hello world. All right, so just to make sure we're clear on why the script is printing out, hello world, Let's quickly go back through the script one more time. So in line one, we created the greeting variable and we assigned it to a value of hello world. And remember that variable name and the value gets stored in memory. And because they're stored in memory, I can later print out the value of the greeting variable in line three. And then when I run my script, it simply prints out hello world. Okay, let's actually go back to our definition because this definition is probably gonna make a lot more sense now. So a variable is a name that we give to values. To later access that value, you can specify the variable's name. Okay, so let's go to step number three. So we're going to look at variables being used inside of real world network automation scripts. So here's our script. And if you're new to Python, don't worry about understanding every line of code in this script. Instead, I want you to understand the intent of this script, and I also want you to understand how variables are being used in this script. Now, the overall intent of this script is to SSH into a router and run and print out the output of the show version command. Next, I want you to carefully look at this script and attempt to answer the question. How many variables have been created in this script? Feel free to pause the video to answer the question. The answer is there are five variables. So there's the hostname variable, the username variable, the password, the type, and the R1 variables. And I can tell these are variables because they're at the very beginning of the line. They have a name followed by an equal sign. Next, let's focus on the first four variables. Now remember, going back to our definition, a variable is a name that we give to values. To later access that value, you specify the variable's name. So in what line in this script are we later referencing the host name, the username, the password, and the type variables? The answer is we're referencing those variables in a later line, in line nine. 
Now, to see how all this works, works, let's look at line nine in a little bit more detail. So in line nine, we're instantiating an object instance from something called the connect handler class. Now, if you don't know what classes are, don't worry. Essentially, this line of code will just create an object that allows us to SSH into our router. And to SSH into the router, we need to provide a host argument, a username argument, a password argument, and a device type argument. Next, let's see how the variable names are being used in line nine. So after the host argument, there's an equal sign. And after the equal sign, we need to specify what device or host we want to connect to. And what we're saying here is the device's host name is stored inside of the host name variable. And remember, that variable was defined earlier in our script, and it contains this value. So we essentially want to connect to the device with this sandbox iOSXE hostname. Now, the next argument in line nine is the username argument. And after the equal sign, we need to specify what the device's username is. And what we're saying here is the device's username is stored inside of the username variable. And remember, that variable was defined earlier in our script, and it contains a value of admin. Okay, so I think you're getting the idea here, but let's just quickly cover the last two variables in line nine. So we also use the password variable to specify the device's password. And we also use the type variable to specify the type of device that we're connecting to. But again, the overall big picture of line nine, in line nine, we're simply connecting to a router via SSH. And this is gonna create a special Python object, a special SSH object connection to a router. And guess where that special Python SSH object gets stored? It gets stored in our fifth variable, the R1 variable. And that's exactly what we're doing in line 12. We're saying we wanna use the R1 variable. So we're saying, hey, let's go ahead and use our connection to the router. And we want to use the send command method. And then we're saying we wanna send the show version command to the router. And when that router responds, we'll then use the print function to print out the output of the show version command. So if we save this script, and then we go ahead and run this script, we can see the output of the show version command prints out. Okay, so hopefully next time when you see a big scary network automation script, you should at least be able to understand and see the variables that have been created inside the script. And you should also be able to see when those variables were referenced later in the script. So I'm kind of thinking of doing more videos on Python basics that are specifically targeted for network engineers. So I'm definitely down to make more videos like this one. Uh, if you're interested, just leave me a comment and let me know. Now, if you also want to continue learning Python, there's a lot of great free tutorials at Cisco U. And there's also a course called the PRNE course at Cisco U. It's actually tailored to teach network engineers Python. Also, I teach several automation courses and we actually cover Python in these courses. So if you're interested in learning more about these courses, I'll put a link to the courses in the show notes. Also, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I post my videos on there too. I'll put a link to my LinkedIn profile in the show notes. Also, if you like this video and wanna see more of these videos in the future, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. All right, that's all I have everyone. I hope this was useful and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Thank you.